good day and welcome to Supreme Success Online Lectures. I am Abdul Rahman by name and I will be taking you through government. Our topic of discussion today is colonialism. Colonialism is not even what you actually need. I want to believe that by virtue of the fact that you are a government student. However, it's important we look into it and some other necessary things about it. Now, we'll talk about colonialism without wasting our time. It's simply the incursion or the invasion of Africa society and all other third world countries by the Europeans in order to exploit all materials. However, you should note that the first incursion of colonial masters into Africa was as far back as 15th century. But actually, colonialism started as early as the uh, 18th century. So I'm talking about colonial, uh, colonialism. What is colonialism? Or let's say, what actually brought about colonialism? Now, one of the direct influence or direct thing that brought about colonialism was the Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution that started in Great Britain. What is Industrial Revolution all about? Industrial Revolution is a situation or a situation whereby there is improvement in the means of production. For instance, I'll give you a very clear cut example. For instance, now, let's presume 100 men, 100 laborers, 100 men, are producing 20 bags of rice weekly. Now, there was introduction of machines, whereby no single machine can produce as much as 40 or even what, 50 or even 50 bags of rice per week. So by implication, there was double of production because you know machine actually performs faster and better than human labor. So what 100 men could produce for a week, one machine can produce times two or even times three of what 100 men can produce within a week. So by implication, the Industrial Revolution brought a lot of changes in the means of production in the world. It actually started in Great Britain, but it spread to all other European countries. So therefore, there are problems that, that uh, ensued as a result of the Industrial Revolution. Among the problems is that what? There was state of joblessness. For instance, now, we said to what 100 men can produce for a week, one machine can produce it within the house same time. One machine can produce it within that same time. Obviously, 100 men cannot be mining a machine. So probably two or three persons will be needed in what? In mining a machine. By implication, 93 or more of persons that were actually producing it initially will be jobless. Why? Because machines are taking over their job. So by implication, one of the resultant effects of what? Industrial revolution was joblessness. Another resultant effect in which we can see together is that there was increment in production. Increment in what? In production. As you can see now, 100 men were producing 20 bags. Boy, when we introduce machine, one machine is not producing as much as 50 bags per week. So by implication, there is more production, which resulted into what? Into need of more raw materials. More raw materials because you can't compare the raw materials that we use to produce 20 bags will be double to produce 40 or even 50 bags. So, by implication, there was another problem that ensued as a result of the industrial revolution was what? Need for raw materials. Another problem that we can't see together from this from the result of the Industrial Revolution that started in Great Britain and spread to all other European countries was that there was search for market. For instance, now, let's say this 100 men were producing 20 bags in a week. Now, machine had come to produce 40 bags, 50 bags, but by application, these 20 bags that was initially produced were enough to feed the people of that country. But by introducing machine, there was excess production in which the citizens of the country cannot absorb the what? The materials produced. So by implication, there was need for the excess produced to what? To be disposed. So by implication, another result, another problem that I issued as a result of the industrial revolution was what? Search for market. 
said for market. So we need to what? They need to look for where these goods could be veritably sold, where they can get more profit as a result of selling these goods. So by implication, from what we have said so far, these are what? These are the causes of colonialism. Causes of colonialism. How is these problems identified connected to the industrial revolution? Obviously, it is connected. Why? Because the whites need to satisfy these problems. They need to provide solutions to these problems. And Africa felt victim of colonialism. Not only Africa, and all other third world countries felt victim. In order to satisfy these problems. However, we should note that these problems identified there are just the economic, the economic problems or economic reasons that led to colonialism. So these are the economic reasons, in which we also have what? Well, political reasons. We explain them one after the other, don't worry. We explain them. Political reasons or political causes of colonialism in Africa and all other third world countries. The political reasons are one is need for balance of power. Need for what? For balance of power. Need for balance of power. Need for balance of power. And another economic political reason why Africa felt victim of colonialism is that there was what we call prestige. Prestige. I will explain all these points one after the other. Let's stop here and uh, let's explain the points identified so far. So the causes of colonialism are this. Number one is what? Joblessness. Fine, as, I, as I've explained in the process of uh, identifying the result of industrial revolution. For instance, now 100 men were mining just, uh, 100 men were producing 20 bags, but they introduced a machine that had to produce 40 bags within that same period. So therefore, up to 98 men will be jobless, and they need to provide job for these men. So the veritable place they could get to find job for these men was Africa, all other third world countries, and Africa felt victim of colonialism. Another point that actually brought about colonialism was made for raw materials. Remember, as I explained here at the same time, a machine that produced 40 bags will consume or use more raw materials compared to one men that produced 20 bags. By implication, it will be double or even times three of what 100 men were using to produce 20 bags that a machine will use. So by implication, they need to get those raw materials and those raw materials are not veritably available in their country. But they have, they have to look for a place where these raw materials are veritably available, which is Africa. Because what? Africa is blessed with these raw materials. So by application, Africa felt victim of colonialism as a result of what? A search or need for raw materials to feed the own machines so that it can produce more. Another thing that led to what? That led to colonialism was search for market. Search for market. How does this contribute to colonialism? Now, as I explained the other time, a machine is producing more than what the laborers were initially producing when they were using manpower. So, by implication, there was excessive production in which the country or the citizens cannot absorb, they cannot consume it within that period. So, they need to look out for where these goods could be sold so that they can generate more profit. Hence, they think and they found it worthy that the valuable place to sell these goods is no other place than where? Africa and all other third world countries. So again, Africa felt victim as a result of search for markets. Search for markets, search for where to uh, dispose the excessive goods that were produced as a result of what? Introduction of a machine. I now said that those theories were what? Were the economic reasons. Now we have what? The political reasons why Nigeria, Africa, and all other, other third world countries fell victim of colonialism. Political reasons. We have what? Need for balance of power. It got to a time that among the European countries, they were competing because it became, it became an honor that the number of countries you colonize in Africa will determine what? The honor that what? That will be accorded to you 
So even small countries eh, want to compete with big countries by coming down to Africa to ensure that there are more countries to colonize. Hence, virtually all European countries were rushing and what were struggling among themselves to occupy a colony in Africa so that they can attribute it to them. So as what? So as to maintain a balance of power between them and their fellow European countries. So as a result of this, Africa again fell victim of colonialism. Another, another reason was what? Prestige. The European countries want to share the same, uh, the same honor, the same prestige with their neighbors, with their co-country members. So they want to be like, ah, we are the one that does this, we are capable of doing this. And today, it is according that the privilege accorded to England eh, was as a result of the number of countries it colonized in Africa. And today, you can see the number of countries in the Commonwealth. Commonwealth are, are countries that were colonized by Africa. Oh, sorry, that were colonized by England. So it is believed that the prestige accorded to England today was as a result of the number of countries it colonized in Africa. So these are the what? The causes, the reasons behind colonialism in Africa. So having gotten this, then we look into what are the methods, what are the strategies that were put in place to ensure that they actually achieve their goal. Remember, these are the main targets. You can see, I don't know, out of all these reasons who have listed, I don't know anyone that is beneficial to Africa. All they are coming down is for their own interest. Is it that they want to boost, uh, boost their prestige? Or they want to show power to their uh, fellow European countries? Or they want, to, they want to boost their economy? None of these reasons is beneficial to Africa. Rather, it is for their own interest. So we look into the methods, the means, the applied to ensure that what they actually executed this and were able to get all what they needed. So let's look into the methods that were applied. There are a lot of methods. Among them is what we call what, what we call diplomacy. They introduce diplomacy. Yes. Also they introduce what we call religion. They use religion as a weapon. Also they use what we call force and also they use what we call indirect truth system. So I will list them no word. Uh, um, methods to exploit a raw materials. A uh, raw materials. So what? What we call what? What we call diplomacy. Also, what we call force. They use what? They use religion too. And they also use indirect through system. All these were methods that was employed by colonial masters to ensure that they actually executed their objective in Africa. I will explain them one after the other. Now let's talk about diplomacy. Of course, diplomacy is a, a, a diplomatic approach to achieve an objective without ensuring conflict, without making about conflict or issues. So one of the diplomacy they introduced then was that what? They brought things that were totally new to Africa. For instance, imagine a king that had never in his lifetime seen other objects talking except human beings. Now who saw a small radio saying, speaking, talking aloud. You can look, for instance, when you are listening to news. So how do you expect that king to be surprised? So they were so, so surprised. In the other, for instance, it's like a small child that is taken to an airport and saw an aeroplane flying. Be like, eh? An object can fly like this. So how a, a small child would be surprised that an aeroplane flying is how our kings were so surprised then to have seen a radio talking by itself. So it was so funny, like it, 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 it never occurred to them that such a thing can happen. So these people came with such a thing, with this video, they exchange with our what? Our leaders, our others. And they say, ah, before I can give you this, then I must what? You must give me 100 hectares of land. So they exchange these small, small objects, which is the diplomatic approach. To what? To exchange for thousands of lives from our leaders. Another thing is, for instance, 
a king or a Nigerian or an African man that never seen his carbon copy before. He has not seen himself before. He was now presented with a glass. So he can see his carbon copy. You know, I will be like, eh? You know, I look like you will be so surprised. And they exchange those small, small things for what? Ectars of land. Ectars of property. Like probably it's cocoa land. Say, give me this cocoa land of this uh, amount, then I will exchange this with you. These are what? These are the diplomacy that was introduced by colonial masters in order to what? To carry out their objectives. And to a very large extent, diplomacy worked. It worked to, let me say, to an extent of 80%. It worked tangibly for them. However, there was some level of resistance by uh, by our colonial, our, our forefathers. Yes, some of them resisted. Yes, they resisted the introduction of uh, uh, diplomacy. And the likes of them, well, uh, the King Kosoko of Lagos, we have uh, Jaja of Obobo, we have Morimi of Ife, we have Atahiru of Sokoto, we have... Uh, 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 Queen Amina of Zaza. All these leaders, traditional leaders, though they were referred to as, what, as proto nationalists, because what their activities were not seen as actual activism against colonial masters. But to an extent, they were the first set of persons to have resisted the imposition of advanced control over us. So that's our diplomacy. And that method they employ is first. The other sense is that if they see that it seems you are not acceding to their request, you are not dancing to their music, then they change it for you. What do they do? They threaten you with their law. They threaten you with their weapons, with their sophisticated weapons. They will tell you if you don't, if you not take you, they will fight you. They will carry you as this. And by implication, they what? You know, Africans do not have the sophisticated weapons, and most of the leaders subsided to their threat. And for instance now, see the case, uh, the case of Kosoko of Lagos. When Kosoko came, when, uh, when Kosoko was the king, they met with him to what? To sign some document to secede. But he refused. And upon that, they forcefully removed him. They supported another king. And that's what? In order to dethrone de him. And he sent him on an exile. That's an example of what? Of the use of force. So the moment they see that this person is not acceding to our request, then they easily use what? To suppress him and put and that was also they use religion yes one thing is this religion is a very a very good means of exploitation that's the better truth it's a very good means of exploitation people can easily be ex exploited with use of religion you know for instance now somebody you are put today you talk morality to the person yeah. do things in the right way a normal person will, will dutifully listen to you and even appreciate you. Now imagine after you have done that for somebody that no, do this, do this, do this, you have like you advise him morally, you tell him the right thing to do. And you can see it in that way. You know next time you make a request for me, you will never fail it. That is how substantial religion was used to exploit us. A very good example is a book written by Ferdinand Oyodo. He titled the book Old Man and the murder. If you read the book, you will see how those old man gave them lands. How this old man sacrificed his young children, two of them, to go to the war front for them during the First World War, to fight for the Britain. And what happened? At the end of the day, they honored this man with the murder. And what happened? The man later landed in jail. He gave them a land to build a church. That church was restricted to only whites. That's to what extent they use religion. It, might, it, it has its own good side, but majorly they use religion to exploit our raw materials. Also, we have what we call indirect system. Indirect system was the greatest weapon that was applied by colonial masters because it worked so perfectly. It worked what? so perfectly. The only place that was little, a little bit resisted was in Igbo, Igbo land. And it was resisted because what? There was no a particular leader in Igbo Procolonial Act, which was discussed in the previous lecture. So that was why it couldn't uh, perform or uh, have experienced the sort of that it experienced in other regions. So in the electoral system, is a situation about what? Whereby they just convince only the leader. For instance, now in Yoruba land, they just convince the king. The moment they can control the king, and probably the other message is too. 
You can bribe them, so you can give them wine, give them some car, you know all those things. Just bribe them those little, little things. The moment they can convince them and bring them to their side, then they what? They command the kings. They tell the king, okay, tell your people to do this. You know somebody that has taken bribes, you, take, you know, he will have no choice than to, than to accede to their request. So, in the electric system, what? To a very large extent. And to an extent, in the overall interest, they were, they were able to achieve their objectives. So, these are what? The methods that were employed by colonial masters to execute their war, uh, to execute their objective. Action. Yeah. Now, at this point, we will look into the effects of colonialism. As I've listed them on the board, one of the effects of colonialism is economic exploitation, what we call loss of traditional last glory, what we call ideological contradiction, what we call loss of cultural values, and uh, the last habit with me is decay in our social uh, system. I'll pick them one after the other and explain to you very clearly. Now, we said economic exploitation. Of course, right from the causes of colonial intervention in Africa, from what I explained the other time, well, like uh, industrial revolution that brought about colonialism, from there you will see that their primary objective of coming down to Africa is just to exploit our raw materials. And if they exploit our raw materials and natural resources, what should be left for we, the owner of the natural resources? That is the result of what we have in Nigeria today. So the most tangible things, because as a then, what we are as a means of economic growth was nothing but, but agriculture. It's of recent we discovered oil. That everybody wants to die for you. <laughs> Sorry to say. So our, 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 our the root of our economic source was agriculture, and it was greatly exploited by these uh, colonial masters. You can see a major source of uh, 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 resources there was production of cocoa. Who is producing cocoa today? Very minimal. The likes of cocoa, the likes of uh, palm oil, the likes of uh, uh, palm kernel. The likes of, uh, 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 what do you call it, grand nut. These are things that were produced in larger quantity. But these people came and exploited all these raw materials to a very large extent. And today, we are left with what we have. So they greatly achieved the objectives of exploiting our raw materials, which is the, what? the most effect, the most negative effect that we ever experienced in Africa. Not only Africa. But all other world war, third world countries. Because we have a called lost of traditional last year. As I just said, the diplomacy I explained the other time, the traditional rulers lost their value, their essence to what? To the colonial masters. Why? Because they serve as an intermediary who's supposed to be the head. Now serve as what aspect to the colonial masters. Because what? The colonial masters will now give them order. They will tell them what to do. And it is whatever they pass to them as a sort of product that, that they've collected probably one or two things or they've done so, so you know now. They bribe them. So they now serve as the mouthpiece of what? Of the colonial master. So it is whatever the colonial master says, oh yeah, tell your people, it's what they will say. By using their words, their own glory, their own honor, their own value will impose on them. You know who an Oba is there? Oba Balu Bubu. Like Oba has total control over everything. But when the colonial masters came, they what? They became a mouth, just a mouthpiece to what to the colonial masters. By virtue of that, they lost their glory. And you can see our constitution to be ordinary chairman hmm, of a local government as authority over a local chief or a local council chief. That's to what extent the glory of a traditional class were lost. See the Akun. Who dare look into the Akun? They said uh, constitution is supreme, the law is supreme, the Akun is supreme more than their law. But they came here to reduce our own numbers to nothing. That even a local government chairman can say, hey, Oba, hey, sit down there. That's to what extent they throw away the value of our traditional rulers. Also, we have what we call ideological contradiction. Yeah. This is a very great point, actually. Uh, and to, to be frank with you, it borders down to, colonial, uh, to capitalism. The ideological contradiction, what we mean by ideological contradiction is what? A difference or difference of opinion in a particular thing. 
And the particular thing they differed was not about capitality. The colonial masters came and they claimed that what? Ah, they've improved Africa. They have introduced capitalism, which what? Which helped them to grow. But their own scholar, or their people, the European scholars argued that what? That colonialism had really helped Africa. They have introduced capitalism, which is what? Which is a veritable ground for us to grow economically. But if that is the case, our own scholars argued that was it the capitalism being carried out in their own country that it introduced was? Then why is it that Africa is not as developed as yours? By implication, the capitalism operating here in Africa is nothing to write about. It's just an advanced form of slavery. It's what? An advanced form of slavery as we all experience. Just a little. Out of us, just a little. Others are what a servant to them. They just pay you peanuts. Imagine they pay you peanuts and they what they rake in the millions on monthly basis. But monthly basis, they give you hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and you think you are any much. And imagine how much they are rake in. That's the product of capitalism. So the ideological contradiction here is that what our own scholars are of the opinion that the capitalism they introduced was nothing, was not a good one, it was not a perfect one as the one they are operating in their country. So they they, it, was, it, was, it was an intentional act to what? To break down our economic growth. So as for us not to, what? Not to get to their own standard. And that's the bitter truth. They are using all they have to, what? to suppress our economy. Even if you see any country around going in Africa, they, want, they know the way of introducing one thing like that. Before you know it, they destroy everything. A very good example is Libya. Don't read about Libya. They are, today, they are asking for Gaddafi to come back. You know what American did? It is hypocrisy. Libya was going at, was going with, was going power. Because what? Libya was doing everything for its citizens. But they do not want to say that. They said, no, introduce democracy. See what is happening to, in, in Libya today? They never had peace because they want to suppress the high quality. That's another word. Another negative effect of colonialism. And that thing is what? Lost of cultural values. Of course, I need not to delve much into this. You know that. See our cultural values. When they came, they told us no. A father cannot do this to his child. When the father has what? Has to train the child. No, a child has a right. You know? All this right, 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 right stuff. See what it has taught us to today. Even a father will be careful in what? In correcting his child today. So the thing is, no, they are not saying it's not good. But the negative effect is impact. Our society is different from theirs. It may work excellently there, but we should look inward into our society and see what works for us. See, we trade away our cultural values. Today, if you must be a big man, you must do this, you put on a suit, you eat or you what type of food, where are our own cultural values of doing things? Where are our own trust? What has happened to our cultural way of doing things? What has happened to our own value? Is it that it's nothing to write them about? That's one of the greatest effect of colonialism. They, were, they imposed their what their own culture totally over us. They imposed their culture totally over us. And that is why it seems Africa had no culture. But what? We are the richest in culture. Yes, we are richer than them. We are richer than them in culture. So therefore, another problem colonialism brought is what you can see it has really damaged our cultural. Right. And the last of all, which has caused us most of the problem today, is what? You can in our social system. It's a problem. Look at just look at your uh, your your society. Like look at that your street. See what is happening. It is a result of the social system. We are going in trouble on daily basis. Everybody is going on like bad friends. You know those attitudes. Today, hmm? If you do not put on a wig, if you don't bab Obama, if you don't do all those things, you are not into it, which is just their own point. What is wrong with us? A social value has been so damaged that what? That even friends among themselves, they cannot trust themselves. And more importantly, there is this man, we we'll call him uh, 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 um, Joseph Conrad. He wrote in his book titled uh, out of darkness. He said, when they came into Africa, they made a very rigid system that they could not interfere. 
They could not spoil it because if they do not spoil it or if they do not break the system they met in Africa, they won't be able to achieve their objects. What do they do? They introduce the corruption. So they were the one that actually corrupted our system. It was, corruption was what? Was alien to African society. But when they came, what? They had to introduce corruption because that's the only means in which they can actually object, uh, achieve their objective. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture. If you enjoy it and you deem it fit that it's worthy of sharing, kindly share with your friends. It will be enough to have a better life. Thank you.